Hey, what's going on internet? Joshua Noel from Sunduck Film. Thank you for clicking on this video. In this tutorial, we'll be going over how to create minimalistic titles inside of After Effects. And this is what we'll be creating today. A very subtle, you know, minimalistic logo animation with uh, some very clean text. So let's go ahead and get started. So to start off, I'm going to create a new composition. I'm going to call this one Tut. Uh, 1920 by 1080, 24 frames per second, or whatever you choose, and 10 seconds for duration, and click OK. All right, and the first thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to go to Layer, New, Solid, and make sure to click Comp Size, Make Comp Size, and go to White. And we will just call this Line. And I'll click Enter. And then what I'm going to do is go up to the Pen Tool at the top here. And I'm going to click a point and hold down shift and click another point. And then we have a straight uh, line for a mask. And then make sure the layer selected and go up to effect, generate, stroke. And here we see a straight line. I'm going to go ahead and change the color to, uh, I guess, my logo color. And I'm going to turn off that mask because we don't need that right now. And there's that. And then I'm going to go up to the text title tool at the top. And I am going to type in... Uh, Sunduck, yeah, make that white, and I'm going to go ahead and put that to medium and raise the font up. And if you want um, some cool ideas for fonts that you could use to, you know, to help with minimalistic looks or certain styles, um, I have a, a font video where you can download a bunch of the best fonts for graphic design um, and sort of animation like we're doing. So um, if you click, the link will be in the description. So. Here's my title. I might make this a little bit bigger. Um, and I will definitely want to center this text. So I'm going to go ahead and create some subtitles. Then I'm going to go to the text tool again. Click anywhere. Uh, type in tutorials. Uh, put a period. Maybe select that. Make it a little bit smaller. Uh, I'm going to change the color to my logo color again. And I have really no idea why my logo color is pink. Uh, just, just something that happened, I guess. And then I am going to duplicate the layer. And type in maybe filmmaking or something. I don't, I don't know. Whatever I feel like doing. So there's filmmaking. And I'm going to spread these two apart. Uh, and then also I need to make sure both these layers are selected. And I need to go ahead and change the uh, boldness to light. So let me zoom in here. Move that over, move this over a touch. Cool. And one little technique that you could do to, you know, if you're having trouble matching up your subtitle text to your main title, like, you know, have perfect, you know, length, what you could do is create, go to layer, new, null object, select the two subtitle layers, parent it to the null object, and then you can, you know, scale it and you won't have any issues with that. But I don't really think I need to do that well. Maybe 99. There we go. That looks, that looks good. Maybe move tutorials over just a touch. Okay, so that looks good. So now we can do some animation. And I'm going to go to this line here. Um, and let's see. I definitely want to move the line up to be in the middle here. Uh, definitely want to, want to make the line smaller. So I'll select both these points and uh, make them a little bit smaller. And now we'll get into the keyframes. And this is where the fun begins. So... Uh, I have my line layer selected. I'm going to go to Stroke and click the stopwatch for End. Hit U on my keyboard to bring up the keyframe. Uh, move it forward in time, maybe, you know, not a second, but, you know, maybe 18 frames. And then go back to the first frame of our uh, clip here. I'll turn this off. And then we will decrease the end. So now we have a line that just pops into frame. And then make this... Uh, the last keyframe, an easy as keyframe by right clicking it, go keyframe assistant, easy as, or hit F9 on your keyboard. And that just comes in. And then with that done, we will start to position this thing. So we'll hit P on our keyboard with the line layer selected, hit stopwatch for position, move forward in time, maybe 115, and move that to right there. So now comes in, moves over. And there you go. Now we gotta start animating this text. So what we'll do is I'll take the sun duck layer, uh, hit P on my keyboard, uh, and maybe go to one second, hit position, uh, move this keyframe over in time, maybe to you know around 
two minutes and six frames, and then drag this over to the right a little bit so it'll be kind of like coming at the line like that. We'll move to maybe one minute and 12 frames, and for tutorials, we'll hit P on our keyboard, bring up stopwatch, move that forward in time, that uh, keyframe, and you know, move this up, and then move forward in time, hit P on our keyboard for filmmaking, uh, move that keyframe forward in time, and bring that at the top, and maybe we'll drag that out a little bit. So it's looking a little bit messy, but we'll clean that up right now. So I'll select my Sunduck layer, go up to Layer, uh, Pre-Compose, um, and then whatever, that's okay. And then select the Tutorials and Filmmaking layers and go up to Layer, Pre-Compose. We'll call this one Subtitle Text, and click Enter. Okay. So with the Subtitle Text, I will go up to the Rectangle Tool, Mask, uh, and then draw a rectangle mask over my sunduck layer, maybe I need to drag these points down a touch. So boom, boom, okay. And then go up to mask one and click subtract. So now it looks like it's coming out from underneath the uh, sunduck layer. And then for the sunduck layer, I'll select that. And when we get to right here, once the line is fully developed, I will go back to the rectangle tool and draw out a mask that's pretty wide. Maybe you need to adjust that a little bit. And we'll just drag this off screen. And then we'll hit M on our keyboard to bring up the mask path, click keyframe, and then go forward in time until the line stops, which seems like it stops. Yeah, right there. And then we will drag the entire rectangle mask over to the line. So now, if we take a look at this, everything comes on nice and clean. And I'm gonna go ahead and speed that up a little bit, my sunduck layer, so go into that comp and just speed that up. Nope. So it'll look like the line and the sunduck layer are coming at each other and the uh, subtitle text is just gonna scroll down and I'm gonna go ahead and speed that up as well by dragging it in their keyframes closer. And then we'll make the little circle and we'll put our logo in it. So what I'll do is I'll create a new layer, uh, make sure the width is 1080 and the height is 1080. And I will make the color my uh, logo color. So there it is. And then go to the ellipse tool, double click it. So then we have a circle, hit S on our keyboard to bring up the scale. Uh, and then I'm gonna click like 6%. And then I'm gonna move this to about right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring in my logo, or you can even just use a, you know, a text. But I'm gonna bring in my logo, and then quickly I'm gonna to go to generate fill and make that white. And then I'm gonna scale down my logo, probably to about four percent. Then I'm gonna select my circle layer and my uh, logo, and go to align and use these center tools to make sure they're perfectly centered. Then with that, I'm going to pre-compose both these layers and call this one circle logo. And then I'm gonna go to the uh, pan behind tool and drag the anchor point to the bottom of the circle here. Then hit S on our keyboard, move that forward in time and hit zero on our keyboard, and that will scale in. And then we need to animate out this line here. So once that comes in about right here in time, so I'll go to our line layer, and then click the stopwatch for start, um, and then turn that off. Hit U on our keyboard, move forward in time, and drag that all the way to 100%. So now, and maybe open that up. Move this forward. So there, it looks like that the circle, the line is you know developing the uh, circle layer, and that's kind of what we have. And it looks, it's looking really good. So, so let's go ahead and make sure to enable motion blur for these layers. So go to the subtitle text. Uh, you know, turn on motion blur for them. Go to this uh, your title comp. 
turn on motion blur for that. Um, and then turn on motion blur for everything in here. And I wouldn't suggest turning on the motion blur for the line since it's already so thin and you really won't be able to see it. But make sure uh, the motion blur at the top of your timeline is enabled. So there it looks like everything kind of comes in nice and smooth. If you turn on motion blur for your line, you're not going to really be able to see it. So that's why I suggest not turning motion blur on for the line. And that look, that's looking pretty good. So a uh, quick way to reverse this effect um, is to pre-compose everything. I'm going to call this, you know, main type. I don't know. And then what we'll do, you know, we'll come to like, you know, four seconds. Uh, clip the end. Duplicate the layer. Drag this forward in time. Right-click this layer. Go to time, time reverse uh, layer. And then it'll just go away. And it, to shorten the time, what we could do is just go like, you know, trim this up. You know, maybe trim off the end here. So there. And there you'll have a clean exit. So um, you know, if you could put this over, you know, any type of footage that you want, um, move this forward. Of course, you know, let's see, put a blur on this. Gaji and blur. It'll blur this out a lot. And you know, sometimes you know, if you're gonna put this over live action footage, you might have to add like a drop shadow, you know, or you might need to change the colors of your uh, text, or you know, even change the font. But you know, even a subtle drop shadow, even though it's not necessarily a minimalistic sort of style, you know, it can look pretty good. You know, if you lower the opacity, you know, make the distance like two, you know, it's very subtle and you really even, you don't even really recognize it's, that it's there. So just something to keep in mind uh, when you're doing, uh, when you're putting tiles over footage or whatever you're doing. So that's pretty much it. If you have any questions or have a request for a future tutorial, please leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Um, and if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. And if this tutorial has helped you, please drop a like. It helps me out tremendously. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys soon.